hey and welcome to my channel my name is Kira if you are new please subscribe and click the bell for notifications so I am talking about unleashing his spirit do you know that God puts a desire in us for supernatural displays have you ever wondered why people are so interested in the supernatural it's because God actually put it in there God put a desire for us to seek his supernatural power not the power of Satan, not the power of ghosts or anything else, but to seek his power. We have to have faith to understand. We have to have two things to see God's power unleashed, and that's faith and works. The Bible says that faith without works is dead. In James 2, 26, it says, Just as the body is dead without breath, so also faith is dead without good works. What this is saying is, is you can have faith in God, but if you don't display through your works that you are representing Jesus, then your faith means nothing. For the Holy Spirit to really work through you, you have to have faith, not only faith in God, but your daily actions need to represent Jesus. That is the works part of our relationship with him. Have you ever heard people just talk and not act and follow through. That's why it's saying faith without works is dead, is you can say you believe in God, you can say you're a Christian, you can say that you're a great person and all this stuff, but if your actions don't follow through with that, then it means nothing. We are in a time of revival right now where we need people to wake up and understand that you can't just go around saying you're a Christian anymore and go to church. You can't just go to Bible study. You have to understand that you have to be a disciple of the Lord. You need to follow through and do things that he did. You need to follow through and do things as Jesus did, which is laying hands and praying for the sick, casting out demons, as he said, and being a teacher of what is in the word and what he said. And the people who did that in the Bible, his disciples, his followers, moved in the Holy Spirit powerfully. In Ephesians 3.20, it says, Now all glory to God, who is able through his mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we could ask, infinitely more than we might ask or think. You're wondering why you haven't seen certain things happen. Where's your works? You may have faith for something to happen, but where's the works part? What are you doing to put your actions where your words are? Luke 4, 18 through 19 says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, and the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. This was Jesus talking. Now, he was sent, and he had a purpose, but he clearly states in the word that he is our example of how we are to be here on earth. That's partially why he came to earth and became a human being, was not only to die for us on the cross, but to be our example of what we are here to do. If we are not fulfilling and representing him in the same way that he's asking us to, then we are not going to see the Holy Spirit actively move in our lives. He is saying here, we are anointed with that same power to set the captives free. That means help people get delivered, free of demonic influence and free from addictions and things that plague them and oppression. That's not what God wants people to have. That's why Jesus exampled people getting free, people being healed. He says that the blind will see, that the oppressed would be set free. He says this. This is an unleashing of his power. In Isaiah 44, 3, it says, For I will pour out water to quench your thirst, to irrigate your parched fields, and I will pour out my spirit on your descendants and my blessing on your children. He doesn't want us to be a dry church anymore, especially in America. He he wants to see people full of his power and his spirit. But anyone who just goes to church, anyone who just goes to church to socialize and isn't there for actually their relationship with Jesus is operating in a dry and parched land. He is saying in this verse that he will pour out his spirit on people and their descendants with blessing those who thirst for him and are waiting for his living water to come from his spirit and his mouth, which is the word of God, and to really use its power inside themselves to get themselves hungry and thirsty for him. Joel 2.29 says, in those days I will pour out my spirit even 
even on servants, men and women alike, God does not care what you are. It doesn't matter whether you are a child. It doesn't matter whether you're old, young, what you are. God wants to pour out his spirit upon you. In Acts 2, 17 through 18, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit, even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. This is what we're seeing now. And if you haven't been seeing this, then you haven't been really aware and looking. So many people are dreaming. So many people are having visions. They're having, they're prophesying. They're touching people and they are healed. They're touching people and demons are fleeing. This is the unleashing of his spirit upon his people. We are in it. We are in this unleashing. Romans 5, 5 says, And this hope will not lead you to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us, because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our heart with his love. This is the love that he wants us to share with other people. We are not meant to get his love and keep it to ourselves. We are meant to get his love and share it. Are you content in your spiritual deadness and passivity? That is not God. That is not God's spirit. God's spirit flows with fire and gets people to move and be active. Or they are so energetic for the Lord that there is no way they can be passive. There is no spiritual deadness. There is only an unquenchable hunger and thirst for everything of God. You know, I remember King David who was a child and his older brothers were overlooked and the prophet Samuel came to him. In Samuel, in Samuel 16, 13, the prophet Samuel came to David and Samuel saw all his brothers with David. It says, so as David stood there among his brothers, Samuel took the flask of olive oil he had brought and anointed David with the oil and the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day on. He went to be anointed to take dominion over land and over armies and over people. He became king. He did so many wonderful, amazing things for the Lord because he was anointed and the spirit of the Lord came upon him. How desperate are you to get your prayers answered? How desperate are you to see God work in your life? If you've been saying, well, God hasn't been moving, have you been moving? Because desperation motivates action. You're not really desperate to see God move if you're not willing to for your desperation to lead to an action on your part. It's not about caring about religions or opinions, the actions of people who act in offense because of what you've said or done. It is about God and only God and pleasing him and being so hungry for him that you are willing to cause offense, that you are willing to say, I'm not part of this religion anymore. I'm a part of following Jesus. I don't care about anyone's opinions. Boldness and faith come in situations where only God can move. If you're in a position where you feel like there's been no movement, I encourage you to focus on these verses and ask God how he wants you to be filled with his spirit. Ask the Lord to unleash his spirit upon you so that you can get God to move in a new way in your life and always put him first. Thanks for tuning in today. Make sure you share this video and make sure you subscribe and click the bell for notifications. Also, click a like on this video. Until next time, be encouraged and know that I am praying for you and praying for the Holy Spirit to pour out and unleash on you power that he has to help you in whatever you're going through, to build you and your spiritual gifts up in the Lord for God to use mightily in his wonderful plan for you. Until next time, be blessed and stay joyful.